sort of in the back end of the car here. And I've got a bit of a conundrum that I don't really know how to solve. I've not really done this before, so I'll give you a look at what we're doing. Um, obviously, the diff is touching the chassis rail. And uh, this component here needs to be able to move up and down as well as the diff. It all moves together. I need a good 60 if not 80 millimeters of upward movement um, from here. So this, this chassis rail is in the way of everything moving. So I've got to do what's normally known as a notch. So notching the chassis. Uh, but obviously it's going to be fairly big. So I'm just sort of playing with some ideas here and physically putting some metal in place to sort of see what that may look like. So I'm thinking here, if that top piece, if we cut the angles and weld them together like that, and that comes down to there, and that gives us our clearance on this component moving up and down in this space. So from that point there down to there. And then from here backwards, I don't really have to do a whole lot, so I could um, come from here up to there, through like that. So basically we need all this out of the way, it's just a matter of how we do it. Now, none of the suspension components are going to be running off this chassis rail anyway, but I am going to have a fuel tank at the back, which potentially call it 80 kilos, maybe 100 Um so it still needs to have strength to it, so we still need to do the notch correctly. So I'm trying not to have too many extreme angles, something like that. I think that'll get the job done. So I've just slapped the coil over in there to sort of see my clearances if I do this chassis rail the way that I'm looking and just making sure that we've got um, clearance that we need but it's pretty tight. So if we follow the, the standard chassis rail where it is that's sort of the, uh, the clearance that we're going to be looking at for the spring which is a bit squeezy so, uh, yes, I have to keep the old noodle thinking on this one, maybe. I've had a bit of a think, and also the last few months, just been keeping an eye out on the internet when I found things that are interesting and saving pictures and seeing how guys do it. Um, a lot of stuff I've been looking at is like uh, mini truckers and guys that like sack cars um, on chassis rails and stuff and how they do their... Uh, chassis notches so i'm sort of going to follow that idea so this is our, our chassis here and the diff obviously touching and we need all that room so i'm going to build this here out of um 75 by 50 rhs and we'll come up and we'll have our angles here and then the chassis, the original chassis will get cut out there and cut out there and plated up. And then these plates here uh, will plug weld um, through here like that and fully weld them around like that. And for a track car, I think that will be more than sufficient. So we're not hanging suspension points off of this. So I think there'll be plenty of strength in there for what we're doing. So that's kind of the game plan. That um, 75 by 50 that I had is a 3 mil wall. It's just too heavy. I don't need that much steel. So I'm going to get myself some 75 by 50 1.6 wall. Uh, a little bit more along the lines of what the original chassis is made out of. And we'll make that up. So this is sort of one part of the car is a little bit tricky. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do it. But, you know, that little bit of research and just checking stuff on the internet and seeing how other guys do it and looking at pictures and then eyeballing with actual metal, seeing clearances, piecing it all together, quick little drawing, and I think that's a pretty solid game plan. So get some extra steel, and we'll get on to doing our chassis drop, or not sure, whatever it's called.
Bit of cutting, bit of measuring. And we got a chassis notch. I'm pretty happy with that. Give it a test fit, make sure it looks good in the car. I mean, I've been test fitting it as I've been making it, but um, that's about what we're after. Looks fairly similar to the drawing, which is a good thing. So, uh, sit it in the car, see what it looks like in there. Oh, not bad. Good size. So that's gonna do the trick. I need another one for the other side. So, uh, rinse and repeat, really. Just copy what we got. So, hard work's done. This is the piece I already cut, so I've already got that angle. And cut three more and uh, get on with it. So I've prepped the chassis rails are where the uh, the new notch is going to sit and really tight so let's get in there and have a look. So that's going to sit on top of the chassis rail here and have plates that go down either side and that sits down over there but we're touching so I might have to put a like a five or ten degree lean on it like that to make clearance for the the coilovers, 10 or so mil that we need for the clearance of the springs. So yes, these are the things you find out when you uh, start putting things into place. Everybody, Tommy Dunkhouse again, coming from Second Stage Workshop, like usual. Another week's gone by on the Drift Van Project. Nephews were around during the week. Give you a quick look at what they got up to. Got these plates made. Uh, they marked them out. We welded four together and they drilled six mil holes and then drilled them out to ten mil holes and then deburred them all. They powered on, it was a lot of work to get done in an afternoon and uh, they got it done, so well done lads, like your work. So these are gonna be uh, on the side of the chassis rails like this uh, to strengthen between that chassis rail and the existing one. Uh, excellent job, we had another strut pulled out. That's gotta get cut down to be made into the coil over. We did a quick little bit of rust Prevention, so just cleaned it up a little bit, put some uh, um, paint on it just to sort of stop it from going any further than it already had. And then I got two of the lads to put the uh, front lower control arms back in. So they're at a really good point now where I've just thrown them tools and said, There you go, get the LCAs in, and they just did it with uh, minimal input from myself. So that's uh, really impressive, really proud of uh, how they're coming along, and they're getting to the point now that. They're starting to understand terminology and they can just grab tools and get in and work um, at the age of 12 and 13. I, I think that's really awesome. So uh, good work, lads. Keep it up. And uh, we should be building and racing cars in no time. So low control arms are in for now. Um, that have all been welded up and paint, uh, just a quick bit of paint on them. And they're looking pretty good. So have a quick look. I'm pretty happy with that amount of lock. That'll be fine for what we're doing. Okay, so you can see here how all that um, fabrication is, is working. So that's where we're driving there. And then as we go around full lock, you can see where that notch was important for the, uh, the arm to go sit in there. And like I showed you before, we're using all of the steering rack. So yeah, pretty happy with them. They're quite real nice. The lads have been working hard. You know, we do like a good two, three hours each time they come over and they don't stop for breaks. Um, so yeah, they they press on and, and we get a fair bit done. And uh, just learning what it's all like to be uh, working in a workshop environment. So they're doing a really good job. So from here, we've got to get those 
chassis rails, those drop notches, just body drops or whatever they're called, those things, into there so that we can cut out the old one. Let's get onto that. So because of where my coilover is, it's really close to those um, to the notches. So I've had to lean them over like that, just only probably three, four degrees, just to get clearance here. So the CAD template, you guys have seen that. And then made these parts up here. I'll show you in the car, make more sense. And these just got a slight kink to them as well. So I couldn't get this point here to line up with the straight bit of chassis because uh, it was just simply in the way of what we were trying to clear. So the chassis comes and curves. So, that one and that one. We ended up having to sort of make the plates like that. So we'll tack them on and make them fit properly and then uh, weld all that up. So there's no way that that's going to be strong enough just to be welded to the chassis rail like that. That's not acceptable, which is why we need to plate it. With that plate in place, all the plug welds and then welded all the way around, that, uh, that will help me sleep better at night. First chassis notch is all tacked in place. I'll give you a quick look. There's the plates. You should be able to see the angle there that I'm running it on. A plate in there, so that'll get all welded. Those holes are for um, plug welds, so they'll get all welded up too, as well as the full exterior of the plate. And these ones are a little bit tricky with the way the chassis bent, but we got it, got it done. And one more inside. Just like that. So I'm pretty happy with it being tacked. I reckon once the other side's done, I might cut the chassis rail out and then do the last plate where there's going to be a big gaping hole where I cut the chassis rail. Once that plate's in place and the diff's out the way, get in there and fully weld the whole lot. There'll be a fair bit of welding there. So I've got to do the other side now, so I'll go and get that done. And there you go, just like that. Through the power of time, the other side's all completely done. Well, it's tacked in. So both sides are all tacked in. That diff's actually welded to the chassis. And then this piece here, is holding up the rest of the half cage. So I'm going to tack a piece in at the top to support all that, and then we can pull the diff out, which will be a bit exciting. That's been in there for a little while now. So it be nice to get that out, which means I can fully weld up all the uh, mounts that I made on it. Here goes nothing.
Brasil. Don't lie, it's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Hello, would you like your car? Yes. Just silly. Well, that should be low enough. What do you reckon? <laughs> if you watched the whole episode, you're clearly a mad lad. Hit subscribe if you want to see this car being built. I've got heaps more along the way. If you want to follow the actual second stage workshop and what's going on there, I've got a Facebook and an Instagram and a TikTok, actually. Uh, all the links are in the description. And if you've got rad cars or you're doing cool stuff, I want to see it. Send me a snap. Same thing down the bottom will be the link. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you have a fantastic day.